Are you ready? Welcome to my channel Cyberhouse YT. Now that you know what an APK file is, let's take a peek inside. An APK file is like a neatly organized box, containing all the essential components that make an app function smoothly. Imagine opening that box we talked about and finding different compartments, each one holding a crucial part of the app. Each compartment holds something important for the app to function, ensuring everything is in its right place. One compartment might contain the code that tells the app what to do, like displaying images or reacting to your taps. This code is the brain of the app, directing all its actions. Another compartment might hold all the images and icons you see in the app, giving it a visual identity and making it user-friendly. While another stores the sounds and music, adding an auditory experience that enhances user interaction, there's even a special compartment with a manifest file, which is like the app's instruction manual. This file is crucial for the app's operation. It tells your Android device what permissions the app needs, what kind of screen it works best on, and other important details. Without this, the app wouldn't know how to behave on your device. Think of it like baking a cake. Each ingredient and step is necessary to create the final product. You have your recipe, the code, which guides the entire process, your ingredients, the images, sounds, and other resources, which are essential for the app's functionality and appeal, and instructions on the oven temperature and baking time, the manifest file, ensuring everything is cooked to perfection. All these elements need to be packaged together correctly for the cake, or in this case, the app, to turn out just right. When everything is in place, the app runs smoothly, providing a seamless user experience. Let's follow the journey of an APK file from the moment you click install to when you're enjoying the app. This process is seamless and happens in the background, but it's fascinating to understand what goes on. When you download an app, your device downloads the APK file. This file contains all the necessary components for the app to function. Think of this as receiving the package at your doorstep. Just like a package, the APK file needs to be unpacked and checked. Then, your device checks the manifest file to see what permissions the app needs, like access to your camera or storage. This is similar to checking the contents of a package to ensure everything is in order. If you're okay with the permissions, your device then installs the app, which is like unpacking the box and putting everything where it belongs. This step ensures that all components are correctly placed and ready for use. Once installed, you can open and use the app. The app is now fully integrated into your device, ready to provide the intended functionality. The code within the APK file tells your phone what to do, and it uses the other resources, like images and sounds, to create the experience you see and hear. This combination of code and resources brings the app to life. It's important to note that APK files usually come from trusted sources like the Google Play Store. These sources ensure the files are safe and have not been tampered with. Just like you wouldn't accept a package from a stranger, you should be cautious about downloading APKs from unknown websites. Always verify the source before downloading. These files could be tampered with or contain harmful software that could harm your device. Protect your device by only downloading from reputable sources. While APKs are generally safe, especially when downloaded from trusted sources, there are instances where vulnerabilities can arise. Think of it like a house with a weak lock on the back door. Just like a burglar could exploit that weakness to gain entry, hackers could potentially use loopholes in APKs to access your device or data. One common vulnerability is using outdated versions of an app. Imagine an app developer fixing a security flaw in their app and releasing an update. If you're still using an older version, your device remains vulnerable because it doesn't have the latest security patches. This is why it's crucial to keep your apps updated. Another risk is downloading APKs from untrusted sources. These files might be modified to include malware or steal your information. Imagine downloading what you think is a popular game, only to find out it's a fake app designed to steal your login credentials. Always stick to official app stores to minimize this risk. Did you know that APK files can be modified? It's like tweaking the settings on your phone to personalize it. Some users, especially tech-savvy ones, modify APKs to customize their app experience. For example, they might remove ads from an app, change its appearance, or even unlock hidden features. However, it's important to note that modifying APKs can be risky. If not done correctly, it could make the app unstable or even unusable. Imagine trying to bake a cake and randomly changing the ingredients or oven temperature. It might not turn out as expected. Similarly, modifying APKs without proper knowledge can have unintended consequences. 
Moreover, downloading modified APKs from untrusted sources can expose you to security risks. These modified files might contain malicious code that could harm your device or steal your information. While APK modification can be a way for tech enthusiasts to personalize their experience, it's crucial to proceed with caution and only download modified APKs from reputable sources. Now that you understand the ins and outs of APKs, let's discuss some best practices for handling them responsibly. Always download apps from trusted sources like the Google Play Store. Think of it like buying groceries from a reputable supermarket instead of a questionable street vendor. Trusted sources vet the apps they offer, reducing the risk of downloading a harmful file. Always keep your apps updated. App updates often include security patches that fix vulnerabilities. Just like you wouldn't ignore a software update on your computer, don't neglect app updates on your phone. They're crucial for keeping your device and data safe. Be wary of granting permissions to apps, especially those downloaded from outside the Play Store. If an app requests access to your camera, contacts, or other sensitive information, consider whether it truly needs those permissions to function. Granting unnecessary permissions could potentially compromise your privacy. APKs are the unsung heroes of the Android world, delivering the apps we use every day. Understanding what APKs are, how they work, and the potential risks associated with them is crucial for any Android user. By sticking to trusted sources, keeping your apps updated, and being mindful of the permissions you grant, you can enjoy the vast world of Android apps while keeping your device and data safe. Remember, a little knowledge goes a long way in ensuring a smooth and secure mobile experience. Before we dive into the nitty-gritty, let's talk about the foundation. You don't need to master every hacking tool or vulnerability before you start bug bounty hunting, but you do need the basics. Learn how to poke around websites using tools like Burp Suite, test parameters to see if you can change or remove them, and perform simple scans with tools like Nmap. Think of this as learning to use a basic toolkit before attempting to build something. For example, Understanding how an application processes inputs or handles session data can be your first clue. These skills don't need to be perfect, you just need to know enough to get started. Once you have that foundation, you're ready for the next step. Choosing your target. Here's where most beginners trip up. They head straight to platforms like HackerOne or BugCrowd, thinking that's where all the action is. But these programs are often picked clean by experienced hackers, leaving you frustrated and stuck in a loop of not finding anything. Instead, start with websites that have vulnerability disclosure programs. These are companies that acknowledge your findings but don't pay bounties. Why? Because most advanced hunters don't bother with them, leaving them as prime targets for beginners. Finding these programs isn't rocket science. You can use Google Dorks or save yourself some time by checking out a GitHub repository like Bug Bounty Dorks. This repository is a treasure trove for finding vulnerable targets that haven't been tested to death. Once you've identified a few potential websites, don't rush in just yet. There's an art to selecting the right target. Avoid the top search results. The websites that appear on pages 1 or 2 of a Google search are often too secure and actively monitored. Instead, dig a little deeper. Think pages 5 or 6. These lesser-known websites are more likely to have overlooked vulnerabilities. Now here's a common beginner mistake using default tools and word lists without adapting to the website you're targeting. For example, if you're testing a site running on Drupal, don't use a generic word list. Use one specifically designed for Drupal. This increases your chances of finding hidden files or directories that other hackers might miss. GoBuster or Derb are excellent tools for this. By tailoring your approach, you're not just testing, you're hunting smartly. Next, let's talk about building a proper methodology. Bug bounty hunting isn't about blindly running tools and hoping for results, it's about having a system. Start with an Nmap scan. Think of this as shining a flashlight into the dark corners of a website. Look for version numbers of services or software running on the server. Cross-reference these version numbers with trusted sources like ExploitDB or Rapid7 to check for known vulnerabilities. There's a word of caution. Not every result you find online is reliable. If a random forum claims a version is vulnerable, don't waste time on it unless it's backed by credible sources. After checking for vulnerabilities in the server's configuration, move on to directory brute forcing. This step is often overlooked, but it's where you can find gold, hidden files, backup configurations, or even admin portals. Tools like GoBuster are your best friends here. 
Use them to uncover what's tucked away. Now here's the deal. I'd love to show you step-by-step -step hacking tutorials here on YouTube, breaking it all down for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon.